in today's three steps to sketch, we are going to graph a basic sine graph. Y equals sine of 4x. So we have our outline on the left and our equation and grid on the right. And we know that this is a basic sine graph because it's in the form y equals a sine of bx. So we see there is not any shifting going on. We know we have a more basic graph to deal with here. So we're using the simpler method. All right, so let's jump in with step one, find the essentials. And we'll first identify a and b. So a is the coefficient in front of sine. There's nothing there. We understand that it's a one. And that means our amplitude is going to be one. That's the distance from midline to max or midline to min. All right, and then we see b is the coefficient of x. So b is four here. And b tells us several things. First of all, it's important to know that b tells you how many cycles of your graph will happen between zero and two pi. So we will have four complete cycles of this sine graph happening between that space zero to two pi. And that's just a good thing to know in general so that when you finish your graph, you can look and see, okay, is that making sense? D did that actually happen? All right, B also helps us calculate the period. And for a sine graph, we do that taking two pi and dividing by B. So we'll have two pi divided by B Okay, and that simplifies to pi over two. So our period is pi over two. That's the length of one horizontal cycle. That should always fit in with B. Okay, if there are four cycles of B happening between zero and two pi, it makes sense that one cycle would happen in a distance of pi over two horizontally. All right, then the last thing we wanna do in step one is choose our scale labels. Okay, and we do this very uh, purposefully, especially for our horizontal labels. We want to make sure that each of our key points in the next step aligns with our horizontal tick marks. So to do that, we take our period and we divide by four. So it's pi over two divided by four, or you may just wanna write times one fourth. So a good scale for this graph will be pi over eight. So that's how we'll label our horizontal tick marks. All right, for our vertical scale, this one's usually a little bit more straightforward. One typically works here, or you could look at your value for A. So let's go ahead and label our axes. All right, we have pi over eight as our horizontal scale label, so we'll count by pi over eight. So one pi over eight, two pi over eight, which reduces to pi over four. 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, which reduces to pi over 2. I like to pause here with this method and this setup for our scale. Our fourth tick mark horizontally should match our period, and it does, so we should feel like we're on the right track. All right, let's keep going with our labeling. We have 5 pi over 8, 6 pi over 8, which reduces to 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 8, and 8 pi over 8, which reduces to pi. So I'm going to pause for a second here and label the negative part of my horizontal axis. It'll be all the same values, but with negative signs. You can go ahead and do the same if you are following along. Okay, so now I have the other half of my horizontal axis labeled and let's label our vertical axis counting by ones. All right, so that is easy enough. And that finishes up step one for us. So we've really done all the analysis, all the prep work, and the next two steps will fall into place very, very nicely. So step two is to plot our key points. Now we know for sine, our key points are in the pattern zero, maximum, zero, minimum, as long as we're dealing with an unreflected sine graph, which we are. We see we did not have a negative out in front of our sine function. All right, so that'll be our pattern, and we can go ahead and start, since this is an unshifted sine graph, we start by putting our zero, or our first x-intercept, on the origin. Okay, at our next horizontal tick mark to the right, pi over eight, we'll put a maximum, and to know the y-coordinate, just use the value of a. Okay, so that's one. 
All right, next in the pattern is another zero, and that'll happen at your next horizontal tick mark moving to the right, so at pi over four. And then we'll finish out this pattern with a minimum, and that'll happen at your third tick mark to the right of the origin, so at three pi over eight. And for the y coordinate, you just use the opposite value of a, so negative one. All right, I like to go ahead and place another x-intercept at pi over two. That'll be the first point in the next cycle of the sine graph, but it also will help us close up this cycle. It'll be the very end point. So that's nice to have for when you move on to step three, where we will sketch and then repeat. So we can sketch in our sine curve here. All right, and there you have it. One cycle of y equals sine of 4x. Okay, and you can see that it took pi over two to get a full cycle on here. Horizontally, it is pi over two in length, and that matches with what we said our period is, pi over two. All right, so to finish up, let's go ahead and do a couple of more cycles of this graph. Okay, so you just follow the pattern that you have in green and you repeat it to the right and to the left. So let's continue on to the right first. So we have our first point in our next cycle at pi over two. Then we have a maximum, then another x-intercept, then a minimum, and then you close it out with a repeat. So we'll close there and sketch in a sine curve. We can even put an arrow to show we know it continues on forever. This is a periodic function. Okay, it repeats, it's cyclical. All right, and let's draw a couple cycles um, to the left of our green cycle. So you can either work backward. I'll show that first. So we'll work the pattern backward. It would be minimum, zero, maximum, zero. So that's working from right to left or backward. Okay, and that gets you another cycle here. Look a little nicer, there we go. All right, or you could move four tick marks to the left from your leftmost point, so that right now will be negative pi over two. So if you move one, two, three, four over, you can do the pattern in its same order as we did the green. So x-intercept, maximum, x-intercept, minimum. It's just whichever you prefer, whichever you like best, okay? And we can extend the graph to the left as well. All right, so this is four cycles of y equals sine 4x. Okay, and one note before we finish up, remember we said b is four, and that told us how many cycles happen between zero and two pi. Okay, our grid did not go all the way out to two pi, but I think it's easy to see we have one, two cycles happening between zero and pi. So it makes sense that another two would happen between pi and two pi. And so we're really connecting back to that very, one of the very first pieces of information we found, b is four. All right, so this is how to sketch y equals sine four x with the three steps to sketch method. Um, if you wanna see more examples of sine or um, some of the other trig functions or some more advanced examples, check out the links in the video description below. And thanks for watching.